Hi, I'm John Hallis from Dauntless Endeavors. Last summer, my friend Gary gave me this Remington 40X rimfire barrel. It had been previously uh, deeply fluted and modified on the chamber end to fit into a Ruger 1022 rifle. And I wondered to myself, what in the world am I going to do with this thing? Well, it didn't take long, and I started coming up with all kinds of ideas for it. Um, and the first thing I want to do is demonstrate to you how I measure the chamber on this 22 room fire barrel using only a set of pin gauges and a dial caliper. The three components of the chamber that we are going to measure include the body, throat, and bore. Uh, keep in mind that everything in this video is relative to the barrel face and we are going to ignore headspace. Chambers are normally measured by first pouring a casting into the chamber and then measuring that casting on an optical comparator. The problem with that is first off, many, most of us don't have an optical comparator. And secondly, that technique doesn't lend itself towards chamber casting a barreled action. Generally, you need to remove the barrel from the receiver and then pour it. And sometimes that's not a big deal. Uh, in a lot of cases, it kind of is. My pin gauge set is an import set. Uh, this one is ranges from 61 thousandths up to 250 thousandths. In one thousandths increments, the tolerance uh, classification on the, this particular set is nominal minus two tenths. Uh, some of them are beyond that uh, tolerance range, but it doesn't really matter because I'm going to measure the actual diameter of every one of these in the range that I need to uh, with my micrometer. The other thing that is unique about this set is that the corners of every one of them is just about as dead sharp square as you can get. And it's really what facilitates this entire process. If they had a chamfer on the ends or a radius on the ends, uh, I couldn't do this technique that I'm demonstrating today. If you, uh, let's see, a set of these nowadays probably cost 120 to 150 bucks for this set. And if you should get them and they have a chamfer or radius on them, uh, that's not a big deal. The next step would be to contact a machine shop in your area and have them grind down one end uh, with a surface grinder, not a belt grinder, not a, not, a, not a bench grinder, not a belt sander. Use a surface grinder, dust them off until you establish a perfectly sharp square edge, at least one on one end. The other end wouldn't really matter as long as we make sure that the ends are square and parallel to one another. If you really want to get persnickety, here's another set I have. Uh, this is a Deltronic pin gauge set with a middle number a pin is 0.2177 and I have 12 pins smaller and 12 above it increasing at one tenth diameter increments. So this is what I use to slide down the barrel and actually determine my bore diameter. Um, if you start if you get a set of these and start sliding them down, do so carefully. Uh, acute angle taper locks are incredibly powerful. And if you get one of these hardened steel pins stuck in your barrel, uh, you're going to experience a whole nother level of pucker factor trying to get it back out. So as I push these to the barrel with my cleaning rod, I go very slowly and very lightly and if I run into any resistance at all, I stop and back out. So on this Remington 40X barrel, I've already used my pin gauges to determine that a 0.231 will not enter the chamber and that a 0.218 will pass all the way through this rifle barrel. So I've created a chart on a piece of paper. 
uh, it's going down from 0.231 in uh, um, 1,000 increments from 230 down to 0.218. And I'm going to start with the 230. Uh, obviously, your barrel needs to be spotlessly clean on the inside. And we're going to measure consistently off of one part of the barrel face and make sure there's no burr or anything there. So I'm going to insert that down. I'm going to put a couple pounds of pressure and wiggle it around a little bit and make sure it's seated as far as it's going to go. And we'll measure from the end of the pin down to the barrel face. 1.890. Okay, I'm going to do one more here. 0.229. Make sure it's seated. And we have 1.669. Okay, and we're going to step our way down, all the way down until we get to the 219 is the smallest we can go. The 218 is going to slide through. We're going to create another column on our chart, and we're going to measure the overall length of every one of our pin gauges. Write those down. And we're going to also take a, um, a good micrometer with the uh, vernier scala around the thimble to measure in four decimal places. And we're going to measure the diameters of all of our pin gauges. One of the other advantages of this pin gauge technique is actually that we can apply it to a barreled action. Uh, this is my Ruger American Rimfire. I took it out of the stock, uh, and um, I, you'll, you may have to disassemble your rifle partly to uh, get rid of the interference with uh, perhaps the, the ejector. Uh, it, it may vary from one rifle to the next. In my case, I just had to take it out of the stock. Now, I'm going to use my cleaning rod guide, and I've already measured the length of this is 8.525 inches. and. I'm going to make sure that it seats fully against the end of the uh, barrel face. And now I'm going to repeat the same process. Let's do a 0.227 pin. We'll get it started in there. The problem I have, I'm going to, okay, I got it slid into the chamber a little bit. Now the problem I have is the range of my six inch calipers won't reach all the way to the bottom of that pin. So it's not really a problem. I'm just going to grab a spacer pin. I, I'm grabbing a 0.235 pin and I'm going to use that as just an intermediate. And now let's take a measurement of that whole stack. So I'm measuring from the end of the spacing pin to the end of the cleaning rod guide, I've got 4.759. So again, I'm just going to repeat this process for um, the consecutive pins in the entire range from the one that is so big that it won't go into the chamber all the way down to the pin that slides through the bore. And record the information just like I did for the barrel alone. To get the protrusion depth of the pin into the chamber using this technique, it's a simple matter of the measured depth off of your caliper plus the length of the spacer pin plus the length of the actual pin you're measuring minus the guide length that will give you the protrusion depth. All right, we have all the information we need, uh, pin diameter and protrusion depth. It's time to sit down at the computer and let's see what this information can tell us. I have my Excel opened on my computer and I've created a template 
for measuring uh, chambers. So my first column is the nominal diameters of my pin gauges, measured diameter and radius, and pin overall length. And so when I sit down at uh, open up a template for a new chamber, all I have to do is enter the protrusion length right here, and it calculates my depth for me. So what I can do with this information is I'm going to slide over here a little bit, and here's my first plot. So you can see, and it pretty it looks pretty clear that, okay, these points are the body of the chamber and these are the throat of the chamber. Sometimes it's not so obvious and I'm going to slide over a little bit further and believe it or not, these are the exact same um, points plotted on a graph with, I just stretched out the axis on the Y axis for the pin radius and it really delineates the difference when the break from the body uh, points to the throat points. And I need that because now I'm going to replot just these four points and then these four point or these eight points on two different graphs. So let's just slide over again and down. So I'm gonna all right there's my four points for the body and you can see here again that's the information that's used and here's the throat and the data that's put into the throat. So the reason I'm doing all this is now that I have my data points plotted for the throat only, I can have Excel fit a straight line to those points and give me an equation for that line, which is y equals mx plus b. So here it is down here, y equals minus 0.0846x plus 0.1727. And I can also give have it give me an R squared. And what that essentially tells me is how well does that straight line fit those points? If it was a perfect fit, you would have an R squared equals one. And it, in rea real life here, we, we're looking at, uh, if we get an R squared of 0.99 or better, that's a pretty good fit. If there is one weakness to this pin measuring system that, that I'm that I have found, it has to do with the body. We are fortunate that this time we have four points that uh, fit pretty well to that straight line in the body. But if it is such an incredibly acute angle to the body section of the chamber that on some chambers I only get two points on there, and of course. When you have two points, the R squared says, oh, it's one, it's perfect. But I'd really like to see three or four or more points uh, that would give me a lot more confidence that we're, we're defining that line. On the other hand, the throat here, we have uh, eight, nine points. To me, that's a very well-defined line and we can get a lot of information off of that. Highlighted in yellow, we have the slope and intercepts pulled off of the body uh, graph and the throat graph. And with that and the bore diameter that we measured, that really is all the information we need to calculate virtually every critical dimension of this chamber. Again, everything is relative to the barrel face, uh, so we're excluding headspace on this measurement, whatever that might be. I've also have a generic drawing of a chamber here and, and granted the angles are greatly exaggerated. Here's the barrel face, the body, and the throat, and now we're at the bore down here. And I've just given them all generic dimensions of you know A, B, C, D, and maybe to help us navigate this a little bit. One of the things that I've been playing with here is in order to sort of create an 
apples to apples comparison of all the dimensions and, and of chambers, of various chambers that I've measured, is I thought, what if we pick a datum diameter of 0.222, which is always going to be in the, the throat, and then calculate what would be the jump from that to the face of the barrel. I'm, I'm referring, it to it, referring to it as jump. And then also, what if we said, what would be the diameter in the body at 0 0.57 inches from the barrel face? And that is significant because 0 0.57 would be the case mouth. Here is a table of all of the various chambers that I've measured with the pin gauge technique and I'm accumulating and collecting, uh, uh, creating a database of various uh, chambers for comparison. Um, the very first two rows I have here are, are the dimensions for the Sammy Sporting and Sammy Match. Those are, um, everything calculated in those rows is right off of um, Sammy uh, drawings, not from my measurements. But the next col next row across is that Remington 40X that uh, we just measured in the shop. And if we compare, we go along, it really is, throughout location is up 0.7. Uh, the diameters, it, it's pretty much a sporting chamber, not a match chamber or, or not a bench chamber either. Uh, here are uh, comparisons from on the... Ruger American Rimfire OEM versus the bench reamers that I did in previous videos. And then I repeated with an 18 inch barrel. Here, um, here's a CZ457 American, uh, Bergera BMR and the Tika T1X also. If I'm seeing any rhyme or reason to how well things are shooting right now, I would have to say that the, my diameter at the case mouth seems to be tracking the best. Uh, my Tika is the most accurate of all of these guns, hands down. It is a hammer, at, 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 for me anyway. And it's um, 0.2257. The other good guns, good shooting ones are the bench chambered ones, 0 0.2259, 2261, 226. It seems to be uh, that's one of the things that I find that tracks the best is 0.226 or better is um, does well for us and larger diameters at the case mouth tend to not shoot as accurately. However, I am far from uncovering all the secrets to 22 rimfire accuracy. You might want to check back in about 20 years to see if I've made any progress. Well, there you have it. Pretty easy peasy, right? Actually, once you get your template set up, it is a pretty straightforward process. Yeah. Give it a try. I think you'll be as pleased with the technique as I am. I'm John Hallis from Dauntless Endeavors. Have a great day and be safe.